Hey, we're Pastors George and Terry Pearsons, and welcome to this super special edition Aww. of the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. <laughs> you know, we've been bringing you the ministry and the teaching highlights from our Southwest Believers Convention that happened here in Fort Worth just a few weeks ago. And why this is such a super special is because you're going to be hearing from Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons. Now, you taught 12, <laughs> 12 sessions. 12 prayer sessions at the at the Believers Convention. And tell us a little bit about that and, and the purpose of it. Well, first of all, the Lord said to me some years ago, there's something about it. When people who know how to use their faith come together to pray for the purpose of prayer. So I've, I've learned over these years of leading this and is seeing how the Lord will feed our faith about prayer and take us from that place of feeding our faith about it into a place of prayer towards the end of the week. Now we pray right from the beginning, but oh, how, things that happen mm -hmm. when we feed our faith on it. This year, we did a lot from Psalm 100, verse four, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart and your, his courts with praise. So we learned about gratitude all the way to the place of worship. And in between, yeah. we had some wild and crazy <laughs> times of praising God and showing God that we praise Him, showing each other, letting everybody see yeah. the praise that we have for Him. Yeah. I'm telling you, uh, friend, that took us from a place we really understood then, by the time we got towards the end of the week, what it meant to come boldly to the throne room. Right. And we had some times of prayer and touched on some things that are very pertinent to the world today as well as our own personal lives. And so I was very thankful for that process of prayer from, from wild and crazy to very intimate times with him. That's right. So, so let's go into the right. service and get a taste of what it's like to be in one of Pastor Terry's prayer services. Psalm 100, verse four, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. So enter with thanksgiving, what, to be having an, an attitude of appreciation and gratitude that we come. What are we thankful for? We're thankful for what he's done. We're thankful for what he's doing. We, we're thankful with expectation of what he will do. We're thankful for all that he's done uh, in the past. We're thankful what he did through the covenant with Abraham. We're thankful for what he did with, through Jesus for us. But we're also thankful for what he did for us. We can recount hundreds of things that God has done for us, beginning with, with what brought us to salvation, with the things that he's given us and the supply and the air we breathe. And, and even though we have to pray over the air we breathe, sometimes we're still thankful that there is air to breathe. And we're just, we're th just being thankful. We just come because we're come because we're thankful. But one of the greatest things to be thankful for is he is available to be appreciative of that because of the magnitude, talk a little bit more about that in a moment, of, of, of who we're talking to and the fact that the King, the King of Kings, the God of the universe has made himself available to you and me for, for the big things, for the tiniest of things. In fact, he is so available and all he is asking that we be equally available to him. Is that asking too much? Is that asking too much? I don't think so. So we enter with thanksgiving and it's something we bring to him. We enter his courts with praise. Again, what do we talk about? Praise to, to shine, to show. It can be seen, it can be heard, and it can be felt. But you know, uh, there's there's a twofold expression of faith, of praise. It's so that because of the one we're praising, he should be the first to be able to see and recognize that it's praise. For him to recognize it's praise, then it needs to be the way he said it should be and not our own idea of it. But praise, praise as he's outlined in the scripture and that what he, what he likes to do it the way he likes it. 
Don't you just, sometimes when people want to give you a present because it's what they want you to have and it's not what you even like at all. You know, most all of us have at least one family member that wants to be that way. And they're so pleased with what they got you. It's like, I, okay, thank you very much. Hallelujah. <laughs> so to be, you, you're thankful that they thought of you. You're thankful for that. So, but also to shine and show forth his praise in such a way that other people can see it. They can sense it. Because, how, why is it they would be able to sense it? Because God will inhabit the praises that are towards him. God himself will inhabit that. He begins to manifest in the very thing that we, ex, we, we declare him to be. What we declare him, you are good. You are faithful. You are God. You are able. You, you have done great and mighty things. You are working amongst us. You, you're awesome in power. You're awesome in glory. Your, your mercy endures forever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Thanks be unto God uh, whose mercy endures forever. The mercy, a running theme through Psalms who, who, uh, gives us all of our needs and, and satisfies the desire of every living. We start declaring those things to him. This is, you are, you are. It's what you said you are. It's what we've seen you to be. It's what we have testimony of. We're so thankful and we, we praise you for the magnitude of your greatness. And, and he just says, okay, <laughs> okay. And you like that? Want to see some more? And so he just expresses himself. He responds to what we, what, because our praise gives him opportunity to be that to us and to, for it to manifest. Well, everybody can see that and hear that and feel that. You can tell when you walk there, you know, and you can tell when you walk into a home sometimes of what really goes on in there. Uh, you can walk, walk in and tell that, there's something not good in this place. But I always make reference, I talk about this in my book about my grandmother's house. You walk into her house and it just, the air felt different. It just always felt different. As a kid, I thought it was the air conditioning. It just was so, it just, it was just, it just felt good. You, you can feel it in the house, the sense of it, the presence of it. It was just easy. There was never, ever, 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 ever did I ever have a thought you could, you could sense any strife. Now, my grandparents on my mom's side, mm, different story. Gra they, they, were, they, they owned a tavern, okay? Well, tavern is a nice word for it. It was, I mean, we called it the beer joint. And that's what it was. By the time I, I they first was a kind of a restaurant when I was really small, but as I got older, that's what it was. It was, it was beer, just lots and lots of, of beer. See, even my expression changes because I remember the smell. I remember the smell. You could, you could taste it, you know. There was nothing like being in there occasionally on a Sunday morning when a hot mop hits a floor that's been saturated with spilt beer for a week. And the smell of it is, I yeah, can just hate that. It. It's, it's just... It just comes back to me. Well, there was an atmosphere to that. There was an atmosphere at times when, because there would be strife in the home. You could just tell the difference, the difference. But inhabiting the praise of his people, I don't mean to get off on that so much. But then it goes on to say, but be thankful, be thankful. It's one thing to have gratitude and to have a praise and we give that praise, but to be thankful is to begin to become one with what you bring. You know, the uh, first enters gates with thanksgiving. It actually can mean enter with an offering. Enter, enter bringing something. Come bringing something. But this be thankful is when you become one with what you brought. When you become, when, when what you bring is really a representation of who you are. Yes. It's not just what it represents. Well, I, I, I'm grateful for that. But it's another to be, to be thankful, to be, to, to, to engage in thanks from the inside out. 
to where your very being is, ex is exhibiting and offering uh, praise and bless his name. I think those two are to go together. Bless his name, meaning to kneel, to yield to a king. I'll do that to say to him, to subjugate yourself to him. I'll do what you want me to do, but beyond that, I'll be all you desire for me to be. And, and what did David say? He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord, you know, than to have to, uh, 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 have everything anywhere else. I'd rather just, I'd rather just be the least of the servants to him. So whatever he desires for me to be, I will acclimate. I will become that. I'll do what he wants me to do and I'll do it because I'll become so one. I'll be so one with that assignment that I pour my whole being into it. It's not an activity for me. I'm putting myself. Have you ever heard people say that? I just pour into this. You know, you criticize an artist's artwork. What have you said? Well, you criticize me. You don't like my art. You don't like me. It's to be one with, with, with what we're doing and what we're bringing because it's a full expression of ourselves. And, and th that is worship. Worship is yielding. It's to yield to a king, to be fully consecrated. That's worship. That's worship is to so yield to him. And as we said last night, to, to declare, be, it, he, but what he wants us to be is like him. Be holy even as I am holy. Be imitators of him even as dear children imitate their father. And Jesus said to, um, but that all the works that he did, that we're supposed to do those works, that he is our example. And he said, learn of me or be like me. And so we, we, we yield to him that he is good. And so in that yielding to his goodness, it's not yielding just to take and be a partaker as in the benefit of it, but to be an absorber, to be a partaker of the divine nature, not just the result or the blessing, but to be a partaker of his nature to be a partaker of Christ in us, the hope of glory, to be a partaker of the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, temperance, meekness, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, to be partakers of, his, of, of the, the work and moving of the Spirit, to be sensitive to Him, even as Jesus was sensitive to Him, to only say what we hear Him say, do what we see Him do. And in that place, why are we doing that? What is it that we're doing that? Because the next step, put up our diagram, please, the temple diagram. There you go, thank you. Okay, so you see the next step, we have this with the gates, then we have the courts, and then the, where we're headed for is that little box at the top, the Holy of Holies. Now, in temple days, nobody could go in there but the high priest one time a year, one time a year. That was it, that anybody could go in there. Everything that happened all 364 days of the year leading to that, built up to a place to where he could step over into that on the uh, Yom Kippur, on that great day of atonement and bring the blood in there and that that would set them up to continue the other sacrifices on a daily basis for the rest of the year. And it was on a national scope. That atonement that day was to provide a national opportunity. But to be able to get to that Holy of Holies, you had to go through this other area. You see the Hall of the Israelites, that's for the men, Hall of the Priests. But then, then between there and the Holy Place, between there and that Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant sat, where on top of the Ark was the mercy seat, where the blood was put on the mercy seat and the cherubim were always watching over it, facing down, always looking at it, where that the way to, you had to go to get there was through the blood because there's the altar. There's the, 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 um, the, 
where all the sacrifices happen and the, the, the menorahs and, and all the things that it took to purify, to sanctify and to, to, to bridge that gap so that the people could come closer to God, could come closer to Him. Well, we have something now that enables us to come to the uh, a holy of holies that's not made with hands. Hebrews 4, 16. Let's look at that verse. And what does it say? Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Come boldly to the throne. You know, because we don't really perhaps give enough time to meditate and to allow God by the Spirit to give us a sense of that throne, to give us a sense of the magnitude of it. I've been in the White House. I've been in the Capitol. Uh, I've sat at the city council table in Jerusalem sitting at the city council in Jerusalem uh, with the mayor of Jerusalem at that time, you, you could sense there was some power in the room. You could, sense it, you could sense it. I was also invited to have lunch with the president of a Central American country uh, some years back. This is Pastor George and I were with my dad and we were invited to go there to have lunch with him and his wife. And it was the palace, the presidential palace. We went actually seated at the table there and invited to have a private lunch with him. And we did. And it was great. And it was had a sense of grandness about it. But I thought while I was there, there's not much power here. There's not much power here. And you could tell by looking around. I saw a window that was broken, had a hole in it. You could, it, just, it just wasn't there. It just wasn't there. But I've been a tourist in the White House. I've been in places where I could pray in the White House. Um, Been in certain spots. I was uh, actually invited to prayer, to go to pray. Probably shouldn't say what country it was, but it was a European country. And invited to the, the prime minister's office. Told, I asked to come in there and to pray over his desk. Well, there was, a lot, there was a lot more there than there was in that third world country. There was a lot more. It wasn't, um, anyway, I won't go into detail, but um, it wasn't the same by far as the United States. So imagine, if you will, If you were in a situation and it's a serious situation and all of the nation was depending on you and the argument you could make in the Oval Office to the president or before Congress, to sit before Congress or maybe something we're even more uh, cognizant or can picture the Supreme Court, then you've got to have lawyers that have been in there before. You need somebody that knows what to say and knows the law and knows the rules and knows the protocol and knows the best way to approach this situation and to make a presentation so that you can have the the best chance of getting a favorable decision and understanding that. But you're thinking, how did I wind up with this responsibility? I'm just, I'm just me. You know, I think about, I, I mean, as, as impactful as our ministry is, it's still it's just like this in comparison, the magnitude of world things. And, and I mean, after all, we're in Newark, Texas. <laughs> we're really excited because they added a Walmart just outside of town. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Newark, Texas, praise God. So the magnitude of this, but the throne room has
has a magnitude of far greater. It's like that third world country compared to the Oval Office, compared to the Supreme Court, compared to the Pentagon, compared to Congress, all rolled into one because he is the Lord God, our King, our lawmaker, and our judge. He is the commander of the Lord. He's the Lord of armies of hosts. He's all of it in one. And he says, here, come boldly. Right. Right. The more, the greater the magnitude we give to him and that place, the more difficult it is in our minds. To, we have to recognize that, that we can't come boldly by our own graces. We can't. It's not possible. When you see how big that is, and he is. So what do we do? Same thing they did. We have to go through the blood. We go through the blood. But it's not the blood of a bull or a goat, but it's the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. Stand to your feet. And it's by that blood that we enter in. It's by that blood that we're able to approach that throne. The blood of Jesus gives us boldness. It says it takes away our sin consciousness. You, can, it, you cannot, in fact, you should not have uh, be free from sin conscious in your mind apart from an awareness of the blood of Jesus. Because to deny sin and its power apart from the blood it is really just to minimize it or to suppress it or to deceive yourself because you don't have an ability to overcome the power of sin on your own. It is by the blood of Jesus. It's by the blood of the Lamb. These days, as the headlines deliver a relentless stream of bad news about the future of the U.S. economy, the mainstream media's experts are warning of runaway inflation and coming shocks to the financial system, all of which leads many sincere believers to wonder whether it's even possible to thrive financially in times such as these. Here's good news. In their timely book, The Power to Prosper in Troubled Times, Gloria Copeland and Pastor George Pearsons offer you a hopeful, encouraging answer and reveal powerful, proven keys to operating in God's economic system rather than the world's. Are you ready to put the spiritual laws that govern supernatural increase and abundance to work in your life? Order The Power to Prosper in Troubled Times by Gloria Copeland and Pastor George Pearsons for only $16.99 on kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Period. Join us for the California Victory Campaign, November 14th through the 16th. Register at kcm.org slash ca today. Since the very, very beginning of Kenneth Copeland Ministries in 1967, prayer has been one of KCM's core mm -hmm. values. We pray about everything. Don't just take off and do something. We ask yeah. the Lord. Yeah. So in these prayer times for the meeting, we're not just praying over the meetings. We're praying about all the things that the Lord directs us to pray for. We, we pray about uh, the, the times, the end times in Israel and America. But another thing that the Lord moved on us during that week was to pray about souls, yeah. souls for the kingdom of God. Pastor George, what we were praying about in those meetings, it was supporting what God was doing outside the mm -hmm. meeting mm -hmm. on the streets. That's right, we, our evangelism teams were on the streets. They had training in the morning time, and then they would go out in the afternoon, they'd minister to people, and this is amazing. The evangelism team won 1,038 people to the Lord during that convention. And wow. this, this team is, wow. is not just the church team, 
It's people that have mm -hmm. come and say, yeah. come train me. Yeah. And they've come literally from around the world yeah. to be a part of that, learn about sharing Jesus. In fact, we had a little, a little <laughs> uh, super kid, yeah, and he right. said, I want to sow seed for somebody that he yeah. was believing to come to the that's Lord. Right. So he went out with the team every day, and his team, his parents and some others, won over 100 people to Praise Jesus. God. Praise Hallelujah. God. Now that child oh. said he found his purpose in life and that was sharing Jesus. Yep. So we are thrilled that we saw this prayer happening, and while that was happening, God was moving. Of course, a lot of prayer goes up before Southwest ever gets here, but it's lovely to see the yep. people of God come together to use their faith to pray as the Spirit of the Lord led us. Now, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, then I want you to be uh, quick to respond yep. to the prayer that we're going to lead you in to know Him because knowing him is heaven, and I promise you Praise not God. knowing him yep. is hell. Praise God. Go so put your hand over your heart right now and say this after me. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, and if you have already, go ahead and say this after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, receive Jesus I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. As my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for changing my life. Thank you for changing my life. Doing something special with it. Doing something special with and it. And thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For all that is going to happen. For all that is going to happen. As a result as, of this prayer. As a result of this prayer. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. name. Amen. 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 Now, if you prayed that prayer, we've got something we want to give to you. Uh, first of all, there's a book by Kenneth and Gloria called He Did It All For You. We've got some brochures that we want to give to you for your studying your Bible to beginning this whole process. So you can request your free package today on kcm.org and we'll get that out to you. Praise God. So we want you to stay with us now the rest of this week and next as we give you more and more from the Southwest Believers Convention. Yeah. Until tomorrow, Tomorrow, remember this, God, God loves, loves you, you, we love, love you, and, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Learn more about who you are in Jesus and who He is in you. Request the Salvation Package free on kcm.org slash salvation. Find something life-giving on kcm.org, your study center for victory. View the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcasts on demand and study along with the daily broadcast notes. Or download the audio podcasts to listen on the go. Watch prior KCM events for hours with truth going in your eyes and ears wherever you are. Get real help for real life problems. Follow our guide to believe, speak, pray, learn, and apply your way to results from your couch, desk, or kitchen table. Stay focused on truth by reading the devotional from faith to faith every day. Read interactive BVOV magazines and click to unlock more content in each issue. Get a faith boost from testimonies of real life success from people just like you. Find information on what partnership means and take advantage of the resources provided just for you. Read archives of Kenneth Copeland's partner letter and download free books from our bonus library. Over 50 titles available to read on your phone, computer, or e-reader. KCM.org meets you where you are.